So what we're going to look at now is uh, is tracking. Um, fracking? Tr no, not fracking. That's what they do in uh, in uh, northern Jutland and stuff. That's bad. Um, no shit. Yes. Um, Tracking is the process where you get um, the program to follow something. So for instance, imagine I wanted to do something to the clock tower up here. I don't know what I want to do yet, but maybe I want to do something. What I can do is uh, use a tracker. So I will uh, rewind to frame one here. And uh, I will go to the transform menu and I will find the one called tracker. And that gives me a tracker. And as you can see, when I when I have the tracker active, I get all of these uh, extra tools up here. The important one is that I need to add tracks. I can do that with this button, or I can do it over here to add track. Um, so if I do it with this, uh, my cursor is now active. You can perhaps see that there's a little plus sign. So I will click on the clock tower here. There we go. And then I'll just turn this off. So now this is ready to, to track. The way tracking works is that, um, maybe you can see this, there is a, there's a center point, which is basically just um, the, the, the point that is reported back as the placement. Then there's an inner cube or square. Uh, actually, it's a box. It can be any, uh, any size or shape you want. Um, that is the search pattern. So it will look for this pattern in here. And the outer box is the search region. So depending on how fast your, your, your camera movement is, you need to make this bigger to uh, accommodate for the frame by frame moving of stuff. Okay? So it has to be able to find this pattern on the next frame. You can see in this case it's a uh, it's a very uh, slow pan, so I could easily make this smaller. Making, uh, making these smaller will make the process faster because the computer has to uh, work on, on fewer pixels and stuff. So um, that, that's the important part. So whenever I've got this placed and I'm at a frame, and you can see it makes a little blue tick because it's, it says, OK, this frame, I know where to be. I could track it now. I can also give it a little bit of help. Uh, in Nuke, we have this thing called keyframe tracking. So I can go to the last frame and say, okay, it's over there. So what I can do is I can move it over there. So that way, I'm helping the tracker in terms of it knowing that in general, it will have to go from here to there. So it will know that it's sort of going in that direction. For this thing, it, it's not really important because um, it, it's, it's a pretty simple track. But if we had something more uh, tricky, something with uh, funky movement and stuff, then it could be a good idea. But you can see it now it sort of knows where, how to follow it. So I'll just go to frame one. And I will click the key track all, in this case. And it will track that pattern going forward like so. There we go. And you can see that now at every single frame it has the center of the clock tower locked down. So that's good. Um, now the next thing is we need to decide what is it we want to do. There's a couple of uh, things we can do over here. We can actually use this tracking data directly if we want. Uh, for something like a move node or a transform node. So I'll just remove this and uh, let's see if I have a nice little picture somewhere. I, th I think I do. Hopefully I do. Uh, see. What's there? What's that? Yeah, we'll use that. That's beautiful. There we go. Um, so I'll put this on top. And to put it on top, I will use a merge node, of course. There we go. So here it is on top. Looking good, I think. Maybe. Why is it? Uh, okay. I'll just add a transform node. So, so now I can move it around. Okay. 
put it anywhere I like. But what I want to do is I want this to be controlled by the tracker. So I'll go to the transform here, click the little uh, curvy thing and say link to tracker 1, translate. And it should lock it down, see now it's moving with this thing. Exactly the same movement but at a different position. Okay, let's go back. What I can also do, I'll just uh, remove this, no animation. There we go. Go to here, put it up here. Let's see. Trigger is still happy. Go in here. Uh, and actually, I'll just turn down the mix so I can see what I'm doing. And in the. Oops. Turn this off. Go back here. Let's make this smaller. Yeah, it should be around there. And then hopefully this will work. Go up here, say uh, link to, tracker, translate as offset. No! Why did it hop down there? It's still linking, but it's not working right. Let's try it again. No animation. Yes. And move it up there. Actually, take the tracker. Link, tracker, track one. There we go. So it's almost up there. And then we can fiddle it right with, uh, with the center settings here. But anyway, as you can see, it's now following the track exactly the way we want. And I can just use this uh, value here to like, move it into position. So I'm just moving this. Down and over there, and then I'll just do the mix like so. So now you can see now I have this thing tracked in. So that is one way to work, um, but it can be done uh, a little more elegantly. This is not usually what you would do. So I'll just uh, remove this transform. And I will also just look at my tracker. So when I'm in my tracker, at the bottom here, I have some export options. There is corner pinning. There is uh, transforming. Corner pinning will need four points, because what it does is it creates uh, a square. So corner pin is what you'd use if you had to replace, for instance, uh, whatever's going on on the screen. So a lot of uh, this is used a lot when, when there's uh, commercials for televisions and mobile phones and stuff like that. What you do is you do a corner pin track of the screen and then you can put anything in there. <laughs> but we don't have a screen here. So what I'll do is I will do um, what's called transform match move. So I create this. This will create a new uh, transform node. So if I plug that in here, there we go. And then we look at this, and then you can see this movement node will now move along exactly um, like it wants to. So, um, and what I can do is I can actually uh, match this up in a different way. I can add an extra transform here, and then I can just push it up here, like so, and then it will move along just exactly like I want. So that works nicely. The other thing you can do. And also, by the way, it has this green line because what it's doing is that this transform is, uh, is linked to the tracker. So if I figure out that there's something wrong at a one frame, it, it, it's jumping or something, I can go in and retrack it and then it'll work uh, automatically. The other thing I can do uh, instead of, uh, of doing a transform match move is I can do a stabilize. So if I do a stabilize, it will create another node, which is more or less the opposite of this, but the purpose of it is to stabilize the movement. So what you'll see is when I play this back, it will lock down the tracker marker. So it will stay in place. So you can see what's actually happening is that it's, it's moving the whole shot to make sure that this is locked down. 
So this is something that is uh, used uh, quite uh, a lot if people are like uh, shaking the camera and you want to lock it down or something like that, then you can use uh, a stabilizer. Right now this stabilizer is just like the position. If I had more tracking markers, at least two, I would be able to handle rotation and scaling as well. So this is um, a normal tracker. Um, and I can, add, I can add more points if I like. So for instance, if I go to the tracker and I say frame one, and I decide I'll track a point over here as well. So I just go and add this point here maybe. Uh, what I'm going for when I'm selecting uh, points is a good contrast and sort of like a pattern that stays more or less the same uh, in a nice way. So I placed it there. I'm not going to bother with the keyframe tracking this time, so I'm just going to sorry, uh, track forward. And you can see it, it locks down pretty well on this clip. There we go. So now it would actually be able to do um, a match move like this with rotation as well. So this actually, it looks like no rotation going on here because it's, it's a nice uh, pan. So that is a, a basic tracker. There's uh, other types of trackers in here as well. There's also what's called a planner tracker. We will uh, just look at that as well. And then we have um, what's called a camera tracker, which is like the most uh, uh, interesting of the three, I think. Um, the camera tracker is able to uh, look at footage and uh, then recreate a virtual camera that is moving the same way as the camera uh, that shot the footage. So this is what is used um, a lot when, when people are doing visual effects. They, they're shooting some clip of uh, people running or driving or something like that. And then they match move it so they get essentially the whole real world footage converted into a 3D scene and they can start to add robots and monsters and whatever is needed. Uh, well, actually, for car commercials, they often just add a computer car because they can make it look nice and change stuff at the last moment. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's just try the the planner tracker in this case. Uh, I can make a planner tracker directly, or I can use another, uh, maybe slightly simpler uh, way. It's to do just a roto, so it's over here, and I grab the roto, and I'm looking at what the roto does here, and as you saw before, the roto I will be able to uh, to draw uh, a mask. So I'm just doing a simple one here, like so. Uh, maybe just to give it sl a slight amount of perspective so that it fits the, the scene. Uh, something like that. And then I can right click this and go planner track. There we go. So now it converts this to a planner tracker just by right clicking and saying planner track. And I can track forward. And what this does is uh, similar to what we saw before, but it will actually look at if things are changing shape, it will, it will know that the tracker has to take care of that as well. I need to track backwards here as well. So I just go uh, tracking backwards as well. And it's tracking quite nicely, it seems. And there we go. And let's see, tracking. So again, what we get, if we go to the tracking uh, tab, is we get the option of uh, creating these uh, things. Uh, corner pin, uh, relative, absolute, uh, whatever. So let's just try to make uh, a corner pin. There. So that creates this uh, corner pin uh, tool. And you can see it has these four uh, corners. So let's see what happens if we put this one in there. Oh, it puts it down here, unfortunately. Hello. Oh, let's see. One up in. And then we need an input here, I think. 
there. So, so what you can see is that it warps the whole thing according to the movement. So if I had something like this on top, it would move the same way. Uh, why is it not? Oh yeah, this is a, a stock frame. Yeah, never mind. So what what you can see is that the difference from this and the normal tracker is that this will actually change perspective. So you can see that it's it warps this because the camera is moving like this. So we have the change in perspective. Okay, but there's actually no perspective. It just changes the corners. But for now, just try and uh, track the clock tower uh, and put something in there. Um, it can be a little image or something else. It's just to get a feel for the tracker.